have two different methods of dividing polynomials. One of them is long division. And yes, it's the long way. But long division works for all pairs of polynomials. The other is synthetic division. It's the shorthand way. And it only works for certain kinds of polynomials. And then we have a thing called the factor theorem that we're going to run into, and another thing called the remainder <coughs> theorem. Both of these are going to help us, allow us to do what we need to do when we talk about factoring polynomials and finding zeros of all the polynomials that we could possibly want to run into. We have some vocabulary related to division. When you divide, what is the quotient? Yeah, you can think of that as the answer. So if we write out our division problem like this, up here is where the quotient shows up. Where is the remainder? Not usually. Where did you first see the remainder? Down here at the bottom. I highly recommend that you don't bother to put your remainder up here because there's no need to. And a lot of people, when they start putting it up here, they no longer have it as the remainder. They have to take the remainder and divide it by the thing that's over here <coughs> and then add it on. We don't do that in this class. We have the quotient, remainder separate. You never divide the remainder by anything. Where is the dividend? Underneath. That's this part right here. And what about the divisor? Well, there's only one place left for it to go. Divisor. <laughs> I know. So that's in my standard division problem. And then there's a bunch of junk in here. But we just need to make sure everybody knows what the words are, because in this class, at least in the homework, we do tell you what, ask you for quotient and remainder. And occasionally we tell you, here's the dividend and here's the divisor. But more often, we just give you the problem and say, go to it, and then ask for the quotient remainder. We have this thing called the division algorithm. You do not need to write this down. You have actually used this most of your life, but now we're applying it to polynomials. And what it says is if you have one polynomial and a divisor polynomial, then as long as you're not dividing by zero, you can write your original polynomial as the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. If the remainder is zero, then what do we usually say? So for instance, if you divide 20 by 5 and you get a remainder of zero, then 5 is what in relation to 20? What did it do? It divided in there evenly. And anytime something divides evenly, it is a factor. 5 is a factor of 20. And so the same works if our number, if we end up with a remainder, then the original divisor went in evenly, and the divisor and also the quotient are both factors of our polynomial. So we're going to use those dividing evenly in factors in terms of polynomials, just like we did in terms of numbers. But let's really get down to actually dividing. Find the quotient and the remainder using long division. I've already written this up here. Let's talk about how to do long divisions. What goes where? Four goes on the left side. I don't have what four. X minus four goes. X minus four goes on the left side. And then the rest of it is the The rest of it's inside is the dividend x cubed minus twelve x squared plus 37x and minus 23. Now this is the law of division. That means, yes, it's going to take more paper or kill more trees, but occasionally we actually have to do it. So how do we start it? Do you guys remember learning this way back when in like third grade? Yeah. Oh, not this part. Just normal long division. Yeah? What did you do in normal long division? What did you normally do? Yeah, you look at the beginning stuff and see what you multiply by to get that. It's one of the hardest things you teach kids. How far to look? Well, this is actually pretty easy. 
You look at the first term in your divisor, dividend, and look at your first term in your divisor and see what you need to multiply the divisor by, just this term, to get the x cubed in this case. What do I need to multiply by? x squared. I personally like to line mine up. You don't have to. Unlike numbers, it's not absolutely necessary because there's no decimal place going up there. And then we multiply our x squared times the divisor, and when we do that, we get x cubed minus 4x squared. And just like with regular long division, we subtract that off. So when I subtract x cubed minus x cubed, I get 0. And if I didn't get that, I've done something wrong. I have negative 12x squared minus the negative 4x squared, which is the same thing as negative 12x squared plus 4x squared, which is negative 8x squared. Now, I did that all by talking it through. Feel free to distribute with your negative sign through there so that you don't have the same problem I do, which is really having to think that hard on that. And then your next step is to bring down the next term. And we start over again. <coughs> what do I need to multiply x by to get negative 8x squared? Negative 8x. So then I'll multiply. Negative 8x times x is negative 8x squared. Negative 8x times negative 4 is positive 32x. And I'm subtracting this. Negative 8x squared minus the negative 8x squared is 0. Good thing. 37x minus a 32x gives me a 5x. And now I bring down my negative 23. And I do it again. X minus 4, well, what do I need to multiply X by to get 5X? 5, so I'll have plus 5. 5 times X is 5X. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. When I subtract, I end up with 5X minus 5X. 0, that's good. And negative 23 minus a negative 20, which is plus a 20, so negative 3. This is my quotient, x squared minus 8x plus 5. My remainder is negative 3. Did x minus, is x minus 4 a factor of x cubed minus 12x squared plus 37x minus 23? Uh -huh. No, because I got a remainder. It did not go in there evenly. Now, how many of you are looking at this going, oh my gosh, are you crazy? Do I really have to do this?